Hello, my name is Rob Edwards. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today we are not talking Wheel of Time. You can tell we're sort of coming towards the end of content for that. I still have one more video, as I promised at the end of the last one. Uh, but today I, I'm, I'm on a different topic. It just not even something which is particularly current, really. I was talking to um, Jodie from the Witty and Sarcastic Book Club the other day. And she's doing at the moment, or maybe last week, uh, a series of blog articles about funny fantasy, uh, humour in fantasy. And she was, you know, making sure that she'd covered all the bases and she sort of asked our advice uh, on this sort of um, chat that we have about any other sort of fantasy authors who are known for their humour. And one of the names that I offered up as being a uh, an author that I thought was very funny when I was reading as a kid was Piers Anthony. In particular, his uh, Xanth stories. But I had a vague idea. I had a vague idea. I have not read them in decades. I mean, not, I mean, literally 30, 40 years type decades. And I had a dim recollection that there was something a little bit problematic about Piers Anthony's Xanth series in particular. And, you know, I thought I would actually have a look back at it. So today, I'm going to be taking a quick look at the first of the Xanth books, A Spell for Chameleon. I'm going to go reasonably full spoilers here, but I... I honestly, my main takeaway from the, having reread this over the last week or so is that I really couldn't recommend it to anyone anymore. Uh, and I'm going to get into spoilers about why that might be uh, in just a moment. Uh, but if you are really worried about spoilers from a book from the 70s, you know, you've had your chance to read it. Uh, and honestly, you would be better off not if you're first coming to it now. So, plot summary of Spell for Chameleon. Uh, in the magical land of Xanth, uh, there is a... Uh, a young lad coming up to his 25th birthday by the name of Bink. Uh, all of the people of Xanth, all of the humans in Xanth anyway, uh, have magical talents, a single spell that they can cast, which varies in strength. Some people have what they call a spot on a wall uh, talent, which is literally they can make a coloured spot appear on a wall. Uh, all the way up to uh, full-blown magicians who have much stronger talents with a much broader reach to them. Uh, there is um, the current king is the Storm King. He had the ability uh, to summon storms and make them do his bidding. So much, much stronger than the spot on the wall variety type magics. Bink, unfortunately, has no talent, or not any talent that he's aware of anyway. And the rules of Xanth is that you cannot stay a citizen of Xanth beyond your 25th birthday uh, without having a talent. So Bink goes on a quest uh, to go and talk to the uh, magician Humphrey, whose specialism is information spells, to try and determine what his talent might be. On his way, he meets a fairly broad and uh, disparate uh, range of characters uh, from... Uh, centaurs to uh, royal guards to uh, um, uh, a self-serving sorceress uh, magician person. Uh, he encounters all the dangers and troubles of Xanth, gets to the good magician, uh, asks him for the information about what his talent might be, but they are unable to determine what his power is. He, he's It's determined that he has a talent, but nobody knows what it is. Even the, even the magician of information cannot find out what it is. So he goes back uh, to his home village with a signed paper from the magician saying, you know, he's got a talent, but we don't know what it is. And they still banish him. Basically, the king gets jealous because he's jealous of, uh, of magician Humphrey uh, and basically still banishes Bink, where he encounters uh, another magician, the evil magician Trent. And through a, a set of circumstances, they come back into Xanth, uh, and I'm not going to spoil everything for the book for you, but essentially uh, there is a bit of back and forth between uh, Bink, 
uh, the evil magician Trent uh, and a companion uh, by the name of uh, Fanchon uh, who have come through back to Xanth together uh, and they have to work together to stay alive and things happen at the end. And first things first, let me talk about some of the good things about this book. It's very easy to read. Uh, the language is very simple, uh, quite clever. Uh, the ideas on show are really grand and impressive. Uh, we see a sprinkling of puns. I think Xanth becomes known for puns later on in the series, uh, and rightly so, if I remember correctly. Uh, again, 30 years. Uh, but they're not quite as on show uh, here in book one. Uh, we do have a few. Uh, Bink's shoes are from a shoe tree, which is a tree which literally grows shoes, um, rather than... It doesn't matter. Uh, and, and a few things of that ilk. Uh, but mostly it is a light-hearted um, fancy humour uh, about a young boy, try, or a young man, trying to find his place in the world, uh, and all the ramifications about that. And... That's kind of what I remembered about it in terms of the overall plot. And it still hangs together. It still hangs up quite well. Xanth is quite an interesting place. Uh, it is, uh, I did notice this reading this as an 11 year old growing up in Scotland, uh, but I did not realize uh, that Xanth was basically Florida in disguise. Uh, certainly the geography of Xanth is uh, Floridian. Uh, and I suspect that there are lots of Florida references in, certainly in the later Xanth books, that I just don't get. Uh, I also, I realised, uh, perhaps, I, perhaps I did realise this when I was growing up, but I don't remember noticing that the, the creatures known as nickelpedes, which are five times more dangerous than centipedes, I get that joke now. I didn't when I was 11, uh, living in a place which didn't have cents and nickels. So, so far so good, but what's the problem with the book? Why is it so problematic? Why am I suggesting that people should not be reading this book now? Um, well, it's, it's, it's about his attitude towards women. Frankly, uh, Bink, as a 20, well, almost a 25, he's one month away from his 25th birthday, but he's a mid 20s and, uh, the way that he and the narrative are obsessed with the female form is extremely off-putting. I mean, none of it is by any means kind of X-rated or anything. It's not, um, uh, it's not like uh, pornographic in any way, but the obsession with the female form, uh, the obsession that Bink has and the narrative has with women's bodies. It's just unpleasant, if I'm honest. Um, I don't know, honestly, looking back at it 30 years later, whether these just went over my head when I was a kid, or whether the attitude of that was different back then, and I was a different person. I mean, I definitely was a different person back then. Um, but there is so much, there's so much misogyny and... Uh, uh, bad messaging, bad messaging about women and men's interaction with women and men's attitude towards women. Don't get me wrong, I have fond memories of the sort of adventure aspects of a lot of the Xanth books. There are some really strong stories in some of these books. But the attitudes to women, I just, I just, <laughs> I just can't recommend this book from it. I, I did really, I, there were a couple of times I almost stopped reading, uh, although I really wanted to get to the end, so I was being fair to the book. Uh, but it just, I mean, <sighs> there is a trial. There is a, there is a trial that Bink attends uh, as part of, um, it's actually a hearing about a potential trial about uh, a woman who had accused a man of a word I shall not say, uh, but had accused a man basically of taking advantage of her. And the hearing's result was essentially, oh, well, she knew the person, perhaps she liked him anyway. And that just in the age of Me Too, you can't say things like that anymore. It's just wrong. 
I just, uh, I know it's of a different time and I know it's of a different um, attitude, but I'm reading it with a perspective now of the 21st century. I'm reading it in 2022 and in 2022, I don't suggest anyone else read this book. And that's really sad to me because as I said, the actual stories, the adventures which some of the characters go on in some of these books are really interesting. The world of Xanth is really creative. And some of the puns, because I'm a big fan of puns, some of the puns are really, really funny. In that groan-worthy, I wish he hadn't kind of way, the puns often are. So, there we go. Uh, a book from my childhood ruined by reading it as an adult. Has this ever happened to you? Are there any books that you've read as a kid that you've come back to as an adult uh, that you really regret having enjoyed so much as a child? Uh, have you read the Xanth books? What do you think of them? Uh, is your What's your memory like of them? Have you read them recently? I'm really curious to hear what people have to say. So there we go. A look back at A Spell for Comedian by Piers Anthony. Mm, yeah, um, I will catch you next time. Cheers. <laughs>